Okay, so I'm I'm recording now, and to, to... I don't see anything that you said about uh, recording the mouse. Okay, um, I'm not sure then. So that's let's, strange. Uh, I, I've I've been able to in the past. I'm not sure why. Mm -hmm. So let's see if I can if the whiteboard is invoked uh, painlessly. So you see the whiteboard. Yep, I only see the whiteboard. I can draw stuff and then I can close it. But then my my sharing is uh, is gone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you hear my daughter in the in the background? Barely, but more importantly, I can see the presenter view now. Uh, oh. Okay. I think there's an order of operations to, to making us see the, the full one. Okay, so let's, let's do it. Okay. Okay. Now, let's do sharing this. And then we go to presenters view. Now you don't see it, right? Correct. Okay. 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 So let's let's wait for the people to join. See, Rick is here. Bas, Jan, Anil, and uh, let's do unmute all of them. Hi, Danny. Hey, good morning. Hi, good morning. I am unmuting all of you. And I see that today we are getting all this, all kind of uh, movement there on the mics. So I, I hope that today all of you can, uh, can participate. And we, we're recording, right? Yeah. For those who have tried it, for those with the, who have tried it already, has anyone successfully installed Zero on their computers? Yes. Mac users included? I have a Windows and I was able to. Yeah, I was able to install it from like the, the computer in the, in the PhD room. Yeah, it should be already installed for you. So when you remote in, you should just have it as a program to run. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that worked for me. Okay, great. I guess, so, Boss, one question. Did you see if the folder of all the manuals got copied to your account too? That one I didn't check. Uh, I think so. Okay. Those are also available on the Zero website. Right. I was just curious if the software and all the files copied to everyone's account. Yeah, so the manual should be available once you install the demo. Mm -hmm. So uh, did anyone check the uh, last time we checked, they removed the demo from their site. Uh, I got, it? I, I contacted zero and I actually yeah. got a nine, I got version 9.2 of the demo instead of oh. version 9.1, but I didn't worry about changing the no. files. It's the same. You're right. There's, there's no, no need to worry. Yep. So it's anyone, anyone tried to do the homework? Any, any question about questions about this? I tried to run it, but I know that we have to change the input file to fit the card system. Yeah. So I have to iron out my input file to get it to work now. No, you, you need to, you need to, to change your input file to, for your geometry and the new, right. new, uh, new structural model. Yep. I was starting to go through the manuals, but I have to look more in okay. the manuals. Okay. Very good. Yeah, I was just wondering one thing. Can you just explain, like in like three words or like three sentences, what is the spline option again, or what what does that do? Okay. So so spline is just um, in, in in the end it's a matrix that uh, just. Um, coordinates between your two meshes. You have the, the structural mesh and the aerodynamic mesh. Mm -hmm. So they are just um, uh, kind of sewing in the, them together. 
So they are they will move move together, and the the loads and the displacements will be transferred seamlessly between the two of them. Okay, but and you gave us the structure mesh, right? Yes. Okay, and then we have to generate the aerodynamic mesh. That's right. Okay. Thank you. So, so if you bear with me, like uh, ten minutes into the today's lecture. You will have all your answers in a, in a graphical form, but then of course you'll you'll need to generate your your own version of the homework. Quick question, Danny: yes. When you've had issues running zero uh, in your research, has the company been very uh, easy to work with? If you had questions on the code, or did they just tell you to consult the manuals? I think they are they are friendly. So I, I, personally, I'm I've been running zero since 2005 so in 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 my late late uh, um, communications with them they were very responsive okay yeah they are, they're really i i think it's, it's 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 important for them to to answer your questions mm -hmm. awesome thank you okay okay uh, michael just just uh, give me give me a sign if everyone is here we can start See, we've got uh yeah, it looks like we've got everyone. We're missing two attendants. Okay. Uh let's see. I think is Yuhan yeah, I don't see Yuhan and Is Siv here? Yeah, Siv and Anand Yuhan are not here. But it is it, it's past time, so we can we can get going. Okay. So again, good morning, everyone. Today we are going to it's it's a uh, it's a it's a much lighter lecture today, and with lots of videos. And uh, we are we're going to talk about Flutter and uh, LCO. So linear and nonlinear stuff, and I hope you will enjoy the videos and the um, all the all, all the things that we're we're going to talk about. So uh, I didn't find any any clever title for this, so it's just flutter and stuff. <laughs> so let let's start. Uh, we will start with flutter, and to start with flutter, we are going to talk about. We're going to show NASA classics. It's called Flutter at a Glance, and it's available on YouTube. So at your free time, you can rerun it. And I will... Um, do any, everyone have the sound? It's quiet, but I hear it. It's quiet, but we can hear it, yeah. Okay, good. So, yeah, so my, my takeaway from uh, what I want you to take out from this video is the destructive nature of Flutter. So you see everything start, starting to vibrate and then eventually it uh, meets its uh, like uh, breakage. So that's... Uh, that's the point I, I am I'm trying to make here. So flutter, flutter is uh, is very destructive when it occurs and uh, when it's uh, when it's explosive. And of course, there are some occasions that it's it's not that it just uh, vibrates, and uh, you can actually live with this. So we will talk about this also. Okay. I'm going to stop this, and then we continue to to my favorite movie of all time about Flutter, and it's called something a model uh, model airplane or something. It's also available on YouTube. So notice the the speed at which this plane disintegrates. So it it will show in slow motion. So notice the 
the bending, the bending mode and the plunge mode, which are interacting together into to the end. So this this is probably my favorite movie of about flutter. So uh, and uh, several examples about his, his historical historical planes that went uh, that crashed due to flutter. This is Lockheed Electra. And Wikipedia says it lost three planes in the 59 and 60s due to wheel flutter of uh, of the engine with uh, with the with the wing bending. You see this this uh, wind tunnel model, and this one is without the plane uh, without the wing. This is example from my country. In uh, this is called Arava. It's an Israeli plane and. Uh, during the test flight, it lost its wing due to strut flutter. So apparently, I am. Um, wait a second. I will try to point with laser. Maybe this will record. So this is a strut, and at the test flight, this one starts vibrating, and the plane crashed. So clearly, clearly, we don't we don't like flutter in uh, in our. Wait. Okay, we don't like flutter in uh, our aircraft, and the question is how how do we how do we clear this? So how do we clear flutter from uh, our airframe? And because I don't have a plane to show you, but I have this delta delta wing, which you are all familiar with, and I will go go through all the all the stages that we go in order to do this. So we first build the structural model. We run model analysis. We do model test to verify the analysis. We build our aerodynamic model around flutter analysis, and finally we do we verify this with the flutter test. So, any any questions so far? Is that strain gauges on your delta wing? It, there are, yeah, yeah. We will we will see in in three slides why why uh, uh, they are there and why why can we what can we expect from them. Any other questions? Okay, so let's um, let's start with the structural model, and the model is built in ANSYS, and uh, because it's a flat plate, so it's very very logical to use plate uh, shell elements to model this. So these are uh, discretization with elements, and yeah, it's it's, it's a very simple model, and uh, takes a lot of takes a very short time to build it. And the results, the model results are these. So we have the first bending at 4.2 hertz. This is the first bending. Then we have the first torsion. Okay, and then second bending. This is second bending, and uh, the high, higher modes, which are less relevant now. Uh, this is the model analysis. So one one of the one of the simple sim, simple ways to verify this is by doing a model test excuse me excuse me so we, we did this test in uh, 2017 i will show you the video and we, we didn't do a conventional model test. We just put it in, in the tunnel and uh, try to, to invoke the, um, the national frequencies. So when, when we do bending, we of course do, we bend, bend the wing. And when we try to invoke torsion, we try to twist the wing. So twisting is something like this and bending is just plugging on the, on the end of the model. Now uh, about the strain gauges. Yeah, let's. Apparently, I can't. I can't run. I can't fast forward it here, right? No, I don't. That's strange. That's a shame. So the strain gauges are located in such a way that uh, we can we can kind of separate the the modes. So the the white line will give you the bending bridge. It's, uh, it's, it's dominant when the wing bends. And the red, red line is dominant when the wing twists. So you can see when I 
do the the bending, you see the dominant frequency at four four hertz, which with the with the white line. Okay, so this uh, this is kind of um, simpler way, si simple way to to show show you the natural frequencies, and it's it's also a way to verify your uh, your previous results. So I don't like this view, so I'm going to do it. Sorry about this. Uh, can you all see the see the screen, guys? Yes. 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 Okay. So, uh, here, here I can fast forward, so I will use this view. Okay. So we we, sh we show you the bending frequency. This is when we, when we when we bend the the wind. And now. The next one will be when we twist the wing and we will invoke the, the 15 hertz, which was the, the, tot the torsion frequency. Okay, technical difficulties. Okay, we can do this uh, in other way. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry about the issues here. Can you see the movie? Guys, can you see the screen? We can see the yes. screen, but not the movie. Not the movie. Okay. I am really sorry about this. You probably need to stop sharing and use the window you're using. Do you see the movie now? No. No. You don't see the movie? No, it looks like it's just a screenshot of the movie. What about now? Now we see the movie. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah, of course, of course, you're going. So you see, you see the movie now. Yes. yes. Okay. So we're going to do it live like this. So we did the bending, and uh, it's invoked at uh, four hertz. Oh, sorry about this. I don't like it. And then the next thing that we are going to do is to, to try to twist the wing to invoke the, the torsional frequency. So yeah, and here I'm just twisting the wing, and you can see the the new peak here at 15 hertz, where where the red line is dominant. So these are we are achieving uh, these readings with uh, with the string gauges. Okay, one more, and okay, see. So this is this is our torsion. Okay, let's close this. Um, Sorry, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, sure. Um, which configuration did you use for the strain gauges? Because it's not too clear on the picture. I'm trying to like see in which angle are they. Okay, the... so I uh, let's uh, wait a second. So the the strain gauges are uh, are uh, are wired in uh, in a full bridge, and I will sh I, I I can send you the paper with the with the close-ups about about the exact configuration of the gauges. I just don't have any any pictures that will make it clear now. 
Okay, I will send Michael the, the full paper about this, like okay, a perfect. description of the test setup, and he can uh, distribute it. Okay, will this work? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay, so let's let's do the next. Let's do. Okay, you can see the presentation, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's go further. So we we verified verified our model analysis, and it's it's very important that uh, you do this before you before you start with any any real world testing. Just just to make sure that your model is is uh, right, and it's uh, it's very easy to to be wrong with the model with all the unknowns that are there. Now this is our dynamic model. And it looks like this. Not surprisingly, it looks very similar to the structural model with the slightly less elements. One thing that uh, that you would definitely want to do every time you build your aerodynamic model is to verify the spline model. So the way that you do it is you you draw you you do a, do a picture of structural modes in your aerodynamic mesh. So for example, th this one, the top top right picture is the bending mode. You, see, you can see this. So the the green the green the green uh, model is the undeformed model, and the reddish one is the bent wing. So if you think about this, we have this data, but it's it was calculated in the structural grid. So the uh, once you see see that the the aerodynamic grid is also also deforming according to natural modes, it's uh, it, it's like a verification of your uh, of your spline and the fact that it's working correctly. The same goes for the torsion mode. You can see that uh, the deformation is uh, is very good and is it as as expected. So zero actually lists this as uh, one of the um, like main main source of error in your flutter analysis this uh, for the sp people that uh, that did not verify the spline and it wasn't working correctly and then the results were uh, not making sense so please do so each time you build your your model verify verify that uh, the spline is uh, working correctly okay and just one quick question yes which software did you use to plot these graphs? Because this the arrow plot cannot the, plot plots, right? This is tech plot. T E C plot. Sorry? T E C P L O T tech plot. Okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, tech plot, if if you if you yeah. are ready to do your homework now, you can you can ask for a demo for like uh, like a week. They will give you the license for like five or seven days. Mm -hmm. and you can finish your homework with this. Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay, now, now we have the dynamic model. Demo. Next thing that we want to do is to run the actual analysis. And uh, this is a typical output. We talked about this two days ago. This is called the VGplot. And uh, just, just a quick reminder. Uh, remember, with, uh, we are looking at uh, the left, left picture now. At zero velocity, the vertical line are the natural frequencies. So uh, we have the the bending. Let's see if I okay. We have the bending at uh, at four hertz, and we have the torsion at fifteen. We have also the higher modes. This is the second bending. I believe this is the, the second torsion. And uh, no, we have here another one, which is very flat. As you can see, only only these two modes, or the only the first bending and the first torsion, are reacting. So the the frequencies are changing. You can you can see the the red ellipse there. And the crossing. Uh, uh, now we are looking at the right right graph, right figure, and you can see the first the the first bending crossing at zero. You can see the red arrow there. So this is this is our our flutter flutter velocity. And the crossing occurs occurs at 15.2 meters per second. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is uh, this is your non-matched result for the flutter. If you want to write it down, any questions now uh, so far? 
in a question. Okay, so now, now we, we know the results and the, the best thing for us to do is to actually run the, the Flutter test. And we did this also in 2017. And we'll, we'll see the full movie here. Okay, uh, what you can see in this movie is uh, on the left you have the wing. On the top, you have still the readings from the, the strain gauge bridges. As is before, the white line is the bending bridge, red line is the torsion one, and you also have the dial for the wind speed. The, the velocity, the air goes from right to left. So we are increasing the speed. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, we're increasing. Oh, apparently I can, I can move, move forward. We're increasing the speed. You can see the two, two frequencies, two natural frequencies reacting. Around 15, this is our torsion. And around four, this is our bending. And you can see the, the division, well, when the bending is dominant at the lower frequency and the torsion is at the higher one. And you, you can also observe at the tip of the delta wing, you can see slight, slight vibra vibration there. So we'll fast forward to, to the flutter limit. And what I want you to, to notice is uh, at, the, at the FFT graph, you, you start to observe a new frequency at around 12 hertz. Just in uh, several seconds. You see this? So you see the dominant peak uh, in a second? Yeah. So the peak is uh, around 12. Let it uh, lock in. Okay. So we are at, at linear fl flutter limits. See that the dom dominant frequency is around 12. And uh, this is something that we haven't seen uh, on the ground when, uh, when there was no, no air speed. So this is our flutter, flutter frequency at 12 hertz. You remember that the torsion went a little lower than 15 and the bending went up. So they are meeting around, around 12 to give you the flutter onset. And if, if you notice the, the delta tip, you, you, you know that it, uh, it slightly vibrates. Okay, so we, we uh, this test, we do something um, that's usually not done. We are going up. So we are going past, past the flutter speed. Okay, so we're increasing the airspeed. As we do this, you can see that the, the vibrations start to be more violent. And the, uh, the locking, the, the flutter frequency is more, uh, more dominant. You can actually see it. Okay, so it, So we, we stopped at around 28 meters per second. More. Let's, let's pause here for a second. You, you see that all, all the noise on the FFT, FFT, FFT plot is gone and we have the dominant frequency at 12 Hertz, which is a combination of the torsion and bending. And you, you can also see the, the fluttering of the, of the delta wing. And the interesting thing that, that we got almost, uh, almost double the linear speed limit. So my, my question for you is this. So how, why, 
how how could how could could we do this? So at Flutter, we know that uh, we don't want to be at Flutter, and certainly not beyond Flutter. But here we are almost twice at the at the Flutter speed, and we still have our our Delta wing intact. And uh, actually, you can s still see it at the the, uh, the Duke lab. So why why didn't it break? the model was wrong well we verified the model we verified the our uh, natural frequencies obtained the natural frequencies from the analysis we verified this with uh, with model test so the structural model was uh, was right and also the dynamic model was right because uh, we the 12 hertz was and was uh, the outcome of the flutter analysis so we are right right where we want to be so the question is why how could we do the how could we go beyond the flutter frequency with the flutter speed anyone else because there is damping sorry because there is damping in the system of course, there is damping. Yeah. So at Flutter, you remember that the damping at Flutter, the damping is actually uh, negative. Negative. Yeah. Yeah. So at, at Flutter, we are we are not uh, we are not stable. So this is un, not a stable position to be. Yeah. So we have vibration, and we are we are at Flutter frequency, but we are still not breaking the structure. So the question is, what? Why? Any any more ideas? Okay, I hear none. So the answer for this is uh, slightly complicated. So our the Flutter tools and uh, all the all the assumptions so far were of linearity. So our uh, our structural model is linear. We have the natural frequencies. We have the aerodynamic model, which is based on uh, tablet light lattice like aerodynamics. So everything is linear. And when we, when we do this analysis, the linear flutter limit uh, is uh, uh, suggesting that beyond this limit, the structure will break, that we have exponential uh, increase in vibrations, and the structure cannot, cannot uh, sustain this. But uh, the world is nonlinear. So each time, each time that we have some nonlinearity in our system, we can expect, so in most of the times, that uh, the nonlinear portion of our model of our reality will somehow dampen the the destructive nature of flutter, and we are getting sustained vibrations. To we have a name for this. We call this uh, limit cycle oscillations or LCO. And this is uh, like a um, uh, very large part of the research that is conducted at Duke and uh, elsewhere. So any, uh, my question is this, uh, you're looking at this structure. It's Delta wing, very, very simple. It's uh, aluminum. And where, where will nonlinearity come from in this, in this case? Guys, any ideas from the flow? Well, no. We, we, we are we are subsonic. We are the very very low subsonic flow. Okay. In in this particular case, the nonlinearity can come from. Uh, from the plate plate bending. If if you remember the the Hooke's law and the higher higher terms of uh, in plane um, in plane uh, uh, strains and uh, the relation with deflection, at some point you will invoke the the, the square and the cubic terms of uh, of stiffness. 
So in this case, uh, uh, we almost certain that this is the, the, the reason for, for LCO. Okay, so here the nonlinearity is structural, but it's, it's, it's not, not limited to the structure. Okay, so, so far we have Flutter that is destructive, okay, and we have LCO that we, in some cases, we can live with it. So, the best definition I could find from, for this is this. This is, this is like scientific, okay. So, if, if, if we have broke, broke structure, it's Flutter, and it, uh, if it vibrates and doesn't break, it's LCO. And uh, the distinction is uh, kind of gray, but um, and this works. So, uh, questions so far? But so you could say that your uh, flatter model was wrong in that case because you, I mean, you were not taking into account linear uh, non-linearities. Okay. So uh, uh, there, uh, there uh, it's, it's kind of an elaborate question. So let's say you're, you're doing your flutter analysis with the commercial tools, let's say finite elements and zero, and you find your flutter limit. And your, your, your uh, recommendation to the flight department is to fly below this limit. Uh, are you wrong? All marks for participation today. <laughs> you are all unmuted. So my question is, if you calculate the linear limit and you're flying below it, are you wrong? No. 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 No, you're not wrong. And in fact, it's, uh, it's, it's something that it's done every day in the yeah, aircraft and the industry. And but uh, where, you, where you pay for it is by, let's say, let's say by weight. So flutter limit is a very, very conservative limit. If you're flying below this limit, you are, of course, you're safe, but you cannot go beyond this. And uh, you're, you're probably paying with much stiffer structure than it needs to be. But uh, again, the tools are uh, still linear and we, we're still, uh, at least uh, at first, we still calculate the linear limit. If you want to, to, to find out the nonlinear non boundaries, you can do this, but you can you should do it outside of the standard commercial tools. Okay, and it also requires you to model exactly the nonlinearity that is in the system, and it uh, sometimes it can be a very complicated task. Okay, any other questions so far? Are there softwares to measure the LCO? software to measure also well assuming that you your model is correct your nonlinear model is correct you just run time history analysis and you will get your your levels of also okay. perfect okay so as a flutter engineer, sorry uh, as a flutter engineer uh, we uh, consider only the linear uh, analysis we don't uh, consider the nonlinearity and uh, always stay safe and give only the linear limit well, <laughs> that's a complicated question. I, I will answer it uh, later. So yeah. as, a, yeah. as a Flutter engineer, you, you'll have to consider both. Uh, at least at first, you, you're always con concerned with the, not, not, uh, with the linear, linear uh, limit, of course. But as a, as a good Flutter engineer, you at least need to, to be aware of the nonlinear limit and how you can at least tell something about it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Let's continue. Um, so uh, let's continue with this. Uh, the point of this video is just to tell you that LCO is not limited to our Delta Wing at Duke. And this is F-16, a full-fledged uh, aircraft that flies every day. And it, it vibrates every day. So it vibrates every day and it returns home safely every day. 
So, so sometimes you can you can uh, consciously live with LCO. And uh, F16 is uh, one of these platforms that uh, there are occurrences of LCO that are known about, and uh, people actually fly with them. So if you if you look if you type Flutter and F16 in Google, you will at some point get to these manuals. These are non-confidential. So you see, that we have a list of uh, several Flutter or LCO mechanisms. For example, heavy stores and AIM nines. This is exactly what we have here. The tip tip of the wing has AIM nine. This is air-to-air -air missile and heavy store. You can see the uh, the fuel tanks and the bombs. These are the heavy stores. So. This is the most significant mechanism. You see the, um, the red ellipse on the left. And the, the interesting thing that uh, this is fully, fully identified and fully characterized. We know that it occurs at around five hertz. We know that the coupling of the wingtip uh, missile with the, with the heavy storm. And uh, you, you can also see the ways to alleviate this. So the amplitude becomes, becomes uh, better as the uh, tank fuel is burned. And if, if the, the air to air missiles are not present. And this is, this is uh, totally predicted and totally, uh, like it's, it's in, in, the, in the manuals. If, if you are uh, buying F-16 now, you should be aware of this mechanism that sometimes you're going to fly with it. So uh, th this one is uh, kind of interesting. So uh, this mechanism is anti-symmetric. And uh, one of the remedies is to actually fly anti-symmetric configuration. Is if, if you remove uh, one missile from one wingtip, your LCO is gone. OK, so uh, yeah, questions so far? Anything? So what uh, what will be the um, the source for nonlinearity in this case? Anyone? Again, the fact that the structure goes away from hook's load. Sorry, again. Again, the fact that the structure goes away from the hook's load. Yeah. So uh, in uh, in in wings in. Uh, like fighter aircraft, uh, one of the sources of nonlinear, uh, let's say, dumping on friction is all the all the rivets and all the all the joints between between let's say stores and the wing, all the nacelles and all the carrying units. So there is a lot of things going on there, which will it's, 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 which will result in. Uh, in reducing your flutter into just just LCO, which is which is good. So um, there are two ways to look at it. Uh, in in one way, you might you might say you might say that you want to exactly characterize your nonlinearity, and you want to say that you want to know exactly what uh, what are the levels of LCO. Uh, from the other side, you can you can regard this as uh, as a bonus. So if you're may, may, maybe maybe at some point you you are going beyond the flutter speed, but the nonlinearity makes it uh, makes it sustainable and uh, actually causes you to return home safely. So it it, it can be it can be regarded as as a good guys there that we are, we know nothing about them. So um, one of the approaches in industry is to to identify the linear the linear boundary, and knowingly go maybe slightly beyond, knowingly that there are some nonlinearities there that will make it sustainable. So any questions so far? Okay, let's go uh, 
further. So uh, we we talked about LCO. Let's let's talk about different kind of flutter, which is uh, which can be which can be flutter or LCO. This is a very disturbing video, and I in your free time you will listen to the audio, but the guys inside are really freaked out. So what what do you see here? What do you see in this video? What's uh, what's vibrating? Uh, the wing. And? <laughs> People are shaking in their boots. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so we have uh, this flutter is called. Uh, um, you can see the wing bending definitely, but you you can also see the aileron. And if you, you if you notice the the wing and the aileron are kind of in antiphase, so um, the the way that this mechanism works is uh, the aileron will 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 go to the wing wing bending frequency and then they will couple in this um, motion. So just a side note: uh, this is this is known, and one of the ways to alleviate this is by designing the ailerons in a way that it will won't it, it won't invoke any adverse motion. So uh, you see, you can see the weights here. The, you can see the this front-facing weight, and uh, and also here. And what it does is it, uh, it kind of uh, makes your your aileron motion neutral. It makes uh, any any position won't invoke uh, additional frequencies, so it can stay in, in, in every position. So the the axis is neutral regarding to the weight in front or or be beyond the, the axis. And this is uh, one of the ways to reduce this coupling. Okay, so uh, this uh, this pattern mechanism is is uh, is uh, known and. It it can be calculated with, uh, with linear tools, but also when everything moves, uh, we not knowingly we invoke all the nonlinearity on all the damping and friction that is present when the aileron moves. So, questions so far? Okay, let's go something that's um, something different. So I, I, wh what I'm showing you is all the all the ways, all the all the like it's not all of them. Several several mechanisms that uh, that can result in LCO. So what are these? So what are these? Stabilizing surfaces. That's right. So these are uh, uh, control surfaces, and each of them is uh, sitting on its own servo. You can see the axis here. You can see the axis here with the the bolts. So uh, something that's very typical to the server servo is uh, the the. Let's see. Let's do this. Uh, okay. Let's erase this. Something that's very very typical to to servo mechanism is the is the sorry is the nonlinear uh, dead bend, which is uh, the the stiffness curve of the of the servo. So this will be the alpha. This is the deflection of the of the surface. And this will be the K, the stiffness, the rotational stiffness. So linear, linearly, we will see something like this, right? You all know this; it's from uh, from high school physics. But in reality, what happens something like this? We have an area of zero stiffness around zero. This is called free play. And uh, if the stiffness is zero, what will be the rotational frequency at this point? What is the frequency with zero stiffness? Zero. 
Isn't it infinity? Sorry? Shouldn't it be infinity? I sorry, I didn't hear you. Can you repeat the answer? Oh uh, yeah, I I said said it be, yeah. Again, sorry. So the uh, my question was if if this the stiffness is zero near near uh, near zero deflection, what will be the frequency with zero stiffness? It has to be okay. a frequency of zero too, right? Because the square root of k over m. That's right. That's right. So uh, if if you if you go to to servo mechanism or a missile with uh, with control surface. You can you can um, actually uh, rotate at, uh, at, at this limit. You can rotate the um, the fins with no effort. So the frequency here is zero. So at, uh, when when you when you start flying, the uh, the dynamic loads will actually uh, make you be b bump into these limits. So what happens is something like like this so we are kind of bouncing between these two limits and uh, this is this is a non-linear non uh, characterization of the of the stiffness and oh sorry Ricky no. Ricky, why do I see you in my screen? Uh, we can see you, Danny. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here's my presentation. So yeah, if 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 you come and you try to to wiggle this uh, control surface, you totally can in uh, in the very very limited uh, deflection angles. But uh, yeah, so so this this is uh, zero frequency. Now, when you when you actually Add aerodynamics to this. What happens is this. Note the the motion of this fin and uh, the bumping against against the the limits. Can you see the free play? Yeah. So it's actually it actually bounces. So. If if you do if you do flutter analysis with zero stiffness, you will probably get flutter at zero uh, at zero airspeed. But again, when when you try to, when you start fluttering, start deflecting more, you are invoking additional stiffness. When you invoke additional stiffness, uh, suddenly you uh, you have some final finite stiffness that will reduce your vibrations. So. What happens is your fin will will cycle through this uh, to this free, free play band all all the time, and uh, it's, it, it 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 usually results in LCO. So um, my question for you is, uh, what can what can we do about it? What can we do about this this kind of mechanism? Anyone? So the question is, 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 is there something to do? So uh, should, should we solve this? Should we, uh, let's say, reduce this uh, free play dead band? No one? Okay, the, the the answer might be might be twofold. So uh, if if you're talking about missiles and um, which are one-time flying uh, apparatus, you might you, you might live with this. But uh, in uh, in larger airplanes, when you are going to fly thousands of times, hundreds, thousands of times, 
you might find ways to, to reduce this and to may, maybe alleviate the nonlinear motion and the vibration at the dead time. Okay, let's continue. So uh, the final the final video will be about uh, once once we have LCO, what what can we do about it? So what uh, how can we exploit this to our advantage? Anyone? No, so I'm okay. I'm going to. Sorry? Mm. Does someone want to say something? Can you guys okay, hear us okay? No, that, that was that was me. My family's in the background of my microphone. Okay. So, so they were talking. Can you repeat your question, Danny? Yeah, I, we, we 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 saw that LCO can can uh, sometimes help us to reduce flutter into sustainable vibrations. But uh, 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 what can we do about it? When, if, if we have LCO in our system, can we exploit this to something else? Can we can we can we use it for some applications? That's what you're about to tell us, right? <laughs> I, I would. I wanted to, to, to hear if you have any, any ideas. Well, LCOs are really useful because you get sustained motion without the fear of failure or breakage. So I know in this case, you, you uh, did some work on an energy harvesting where you're using the sustained motion without breaking. But um, I know that from my time at Rolls-Royce too, there was times where um, the LCO would help a little bit in the aerodynamics knowing that it wouldn't break, but it would have some motion built in um, to their engines. Yeah, this, this is right. So uh, LCO can help us. Well, it's, it's not fair because you have the, the answer on this on the screen. <laughs> but uh, I, I will just roll the movie. So it, 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 it's part of my PhD research. We used LCO, uh, we have this aluminum plate. You can see it here. And uh, this plate uh, sustains LCO in the town, and we attach the piezo elements on, on top of this plate, and we, we harvested energy. And I will reduce this. So we are not, uh, not there yet. So uh, the advantage here is that LCO is self-excited, and uh, the deflections that you get are really, really violent and big. And this is something that you that you cannot get with um, with uh, forced vibrations. So this is slow motion, and you can see that uh, the deflection is really really substantial. So the bad news is that you cannot uh, cannot ditch your electric bill and just put this on your roof. Mm -hmm. Not not now. But uh, but you can maybe maybe charge your phone during the day with this so yeah we we played with this a little bit and uh, yeah so this is a simple aluminum plate with the lco and it has piezo, piezo elements on top which generate electricity when when the when this happens so questions is this patent pending no no <laughs> it's, it's called common knowledge <laughs> Anything else? So I'm 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 uh, almost at the end of the presentation. So this is the um, the last last uh, movie. So any any questions about what we covered here about zero about whatever? Okay. I get that. Uh, okay. Questions? <laughs> now it's official. No one? So everyone is an expert in Z Aero. We're not going to have to worry about any Michael, uncertainties. We might add to the homework to, to find the, the LCO deflection. I think that's easy enough. 
considering yeah. considering they're already confident with what they've done. Yeah, no one yeah. is asking anything, so probably probably it will be a good idea. I'm just overwhelmed. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I'm confident. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm done. I hope you you enjoyed the the short videos. And yeah, good luck with uh, with your homework. So I'm uh, I'm available at uh, via email with anything that you might might need. And that's it. Thank you for sharing the videos, Danny. That was helpful to kind of see Flutter and LCO. Thank you, Danny. Sure. But that was the the idea. So I hope that you you are now connected to the real world. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Danny. Okay, guys. Thanks. Okay, we'll stop recording.